Whoa, I've just seen a baboon. Let me see if I can get it. This is the first of a rather different style of videos that you're going to be seeing a little bit more often on this channel. Now, of course, some of you might know me already from my other channel, and that's called Farm Up. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel. I'm very passionate about poultry farming. I'm certainly known for being a farmer. But hey, I feel like I want to share a little bit more of my life, which is outside farming. You see, when you watch the YouTube videos, it's easy to think that that's all that there is to my life, that I just wake up every day, sit on the farm. But hey, there is more to life than, than that. And I want to show you guys the hard work that goes behind success. And a little bit more of my life because I feel like I have more to offer. It's quite befitting that this video actually starts being shown from where I am. I'm in a place called Fort Porto. It's in the west of Uganda. And over the past two days, I've traveled around 780 kilometers. So I've been visiting two of my outlets. One of them is in northern Uganda in a place called Gulu. And another is in western Uganda in a place called Hoima. And the reason I've been visiting these outlets is because I have new stuff in those outlets. And it's important that I actually go over there to try and motivate the people. Meanwhile, uh, this being my first time doing videos on the street, it feels rather strange. Because walking around, everyone is looking at me. But I think I'll get used to it, isn't it? I see a lot of people doing it, so I'll get used to it. Everyone who passes, you know, in Uganda, we have a lot of motorcycles, border borders. Everyone who passes is looking at me. It doesn't matter. So um, I've been moving to these outlets, and I do a lot of such journeys. You know, every month I travel very many kilometers, maybe 5,000 kilometers every month. <laughs> So like I said, the past few days I've been driving around Kampala for a very long distance and today I decided not to travel, I decided not to go anywhere. The only work I did or the main work I did was, you know, computer work. I finished editing a YouTube video that I actually uploaded on the channel and I've been doing some computer work, you know, trying to check out the cells and, you know, following up with work in the different outlets that I have around the country. I have around, you know, 11 outlets around the country. So I've been checking up on that and doing a bit of resting because tomorrow I'm going to be getting back to the road and driving so much. And you know, the body needs to rest, yeah? I don't want to be on the road each and every day of my life and I'm driving long, you know, long distances, seven, eight hours every day. I've just finished having my lunch and I'm going to be going back to the hotel room where I'm sleeping. I'll be doing some computer work later on and then, you know, get to bed. And tomorrow morning, I'll wake up very early and get back to the field, you know. So I'm hoping tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll take you guys along. I'll probably get up too early and might not be befitting for me to start recording because it might still be dark. But as soon as it, you know, becomes bright outside, I'll be showing you guys exactly what's happening. So last night I talked to the client that I'm supposed to be seeing today. They're supposed to have traveled last evening and so I was supposed to travel very early today morning and see them. But hey, when I talked to them last evening, they told me they won't make it very early. So they would travel today morning and they are traveling from Kampala and it's quite a distance to the place. Maybe five, six hours for them. So I considered there is no need for me to wake up so early. So I'm ready to go. Um, it's already morning as you can see through the window. Um, we sleep with mosquito nets in Uganda because of malaria. It's a disease you don't want to suffer from. My bags are ready, I'm packed, and come on, let's go. quite a number of times and it never ceases to amaze me how beautiful the country is you know you never appreciate your place you are always thinking about going and visiting the other places but Uganda is so beautiful so I've just crossed over from the Fort Porto region where I was to Kasese region and in the Fort Porto region it's you know very hilly lots of hills what maybe what people would even call mountains and over here it's so flat the terrain just changes very significantly 
like just suddenly like that you know in in this region the flood region this season so there's a lot of a lot of floods you can't imagine floods in a mountainous region because water is always rushing down the hill and it's looking for somewhere to go over here water can get stagnant and you have floods but yeah it's so beautiful and i'm enjoying it you know this is the region where we have um, a national park it's called queen elizabeth national park uh, unfortunately i'm not allowed to film in the national park but I'll, I'll probably stand at a distance somewhere and show you guys the national park you know uh, with lots of wild animals lots of safaris i've gone there for some safaris myself personally and it's beautiful so i'm just driving slowly because the client i'm supposed to visit you know he's supposed to be starting a farm he wants to start a farm of about fifty thousand bucks. he's going to arrive a bit late so why not just you know enjoy enjoy the area so i've decided to take a driving break right along the highway probably not the safest place but the place is not busy at all so it's usually one or two vehicles that pass behind me you can see we have some hills then this side i think the park has started right at this point i can see in the distance there is a lake i'm not certain of the name of the lake i'm going to check it out i don't know why they didn't give all these lakes you know african names it's the colonizers who decided to give them white man names anyway nothing we can do about that right now and guys i don't want you to think that this is a traveling channel no it's certainly not a traveling channel the whole goal is for me to show you guys and share with you guys the depths of my life so when i was driving i was thinking about do i really need a driver you know i do a lot of driving guys yeah i was telling you guys i drive maybe five thousand kilometers every month if i drive little i'll drive maybe two three thousand kilometers a month but it will be closer to five thousand every month and so I was thinking to myself, maybe for me to be a bit more productive, I need to do less driving. So I get a driver to drive me around. But while I was thinking, I actually noticed that guys, I can't work in a moving car. I can't. You know, maybe the only advantage it would give me is that I would get to rest a little bit more during the drives. But I can't work in a moving car. I can't get a computer out and start working on a moving car. I can't use the phone in a moving car because I get terrible headaches and dizziness and then also i love being spontaneous i love the idea of me doing what i want whenever i want wherever i want so the whole idea of having someone around me someone to drive me and telling them let's go here let's go here i don't like it yeah so for now <laughs> i think i'm going to keep driving myself what do you guys think about the idea yeah tell me what you think about me getting a driver I'm driving through the park right now and it's not unusual guys that you come across wild animals right on the highway sometimes it's elephants hippos lions so I'm hoping this time we'll be lucky and something interesting is that in the national park there's communities that live in the national park interesting yeah and they actually grow crops inside there and I've seen clips on YouTube right here in Uganda where someone is moving on a motorcycle carrying bunches of bananas and then he will meet lions <laughs> he'll meet lions and he just passes by the lions on his motorcycle interesting i read somewhere where they explain why the the animals don't attack such people and they say it's because you know the animals associate the person to be one with the motorcycle so they can't imagine attacking a motorcycle you know it's it has a motor it's running it's making noise so it's not a threat to them so they don't they don't imagine they about attacking a motorcycle but as soon as you get off that motorcycle you're in trouble oh i've just seen a baboon let me see if i can get it Guys, I just got an elephant right here and um, I'm right by the road as you can see in the car I don't want to be separated from the vehicle some guys here have found me right here and they have gotten out of the car but he's with the tour guide I can see so the tour guide should certainly know what to do I am not ready to risk so I've gotten an elephant I'm seeing in the distance maybe 150 meters away from where I am and from what I can tell, I think it's a male elephant. There's a huge group of animals in front of me. I can't, I don't know what those are, 
but I think it's monkeys, some form of monkeys. Guys, it's baboons. It's baboons. And right in front of me is a herd of buffalo. Right next to a residential place. Take a look at it right there. You, know? you can see it. That's a herd of buffalo. And you can see how close people's homes are, you know. There's people living all around the area. All those are people's homes. You know, all those are people's homes. And it's rare, but we all know that buffalo are also on the menu for the lions. So if the lion decides to come for food, it could easily come over here. In a residential area, but anyway, these guys have learned to live with these animals. They probably have some forms of caution that they take to protect themselves from them. So I finally reached my destination. Well, not really, but I've been linked up with someone who's going to be taking me to the place where the farm is going to be put. Like I told you guys, this guy wants to keep 50,000 chickens. Crazy, right? But yeah, those are the kinds of clients I deal with. So we want to start with 10,000 and maybe in a year or two, we'll have scaled up to 50,000. So I'm waiting for someone to come and pick me up. We'll go and check out the place. farm of the client but it's raining it's been raining like for the past 30 minutes since I arrived here I really have no options but to wait so I've been waiting inside the car while working so I have my notebook over here and I'm thinking about the next videos that I'm going to be making so I'm you know making notes over here for my YouTube videos you know trying not to waste time I could just easily sit here and maybe watch a YouTube video and I've decided to work and right there you can see that's the outside you know you can see the rain yeah it's the rain has reduced but it's still quite significant we can't step out he has a huge plantation and I do believe that it's behind this plantation that we're going to be placing the the farm <music> I've just been checking out uh, our place it's been raining I can tell you guys it's been raining the rain was quite heavy so I had to wear gambits as you can see moving through a plantation you know it's it's a wild place as you can see lots of bananas this is our staple food in Uganda so lots of bananas everywhere and uh, I think I've identified my place where we're going to be placing our farm. By then, I had to check out the other places, but my mind is almost made up already. Moving through a lot of mud, you can see. Also, we've reached this structure, which is going to be quite sufficient. This was used as a cattle shed previously, and I've been told these pits here were used for making silage. Currently, it just has a lot of soil, and you can see that there are different compartments on this other side where cattle used to be. It's a huge structure, maybe measures 40, 45 meters in length, 10 meters in width. And this can take up quite a number of birds. So this we can use to start brooding the chickens while we prepare them to go into the bigger structures, you know, where they'll be raised to start laying their eggs. It's 3 p.m. A quarter past three, and it feels like I've been on the road forever. Oh my God been on the road forever. I'm done with the client and right now I'm going to go check out uh, my outlet, one of the outlets I have in this region and then after that I'll check out another one client whose farm is quite close actually to the outlet. So we are now inside Mbarara city. It's in the west of the country. You can see it right there. Yeah. And I'll be moving to my outlet. Uh, it's a little bit on the outskirts of the city but the, the lady who works there has no idea that I'm coming, so I'm just going to surprise her. But she's a very good one. She's one of the best that I have. Okay guys, so we are here and you won't believe. It's like 3.40 
and the outlet is closed. There you go. You can see it right there. Yeah, Farm Up Chicks Mbara outlet. The properly closed. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call the lady up because it's a Saturday. She's supposed to close at 4, not at 3.35. And this is the importance of, you know, this these failed visits and the surprise failed visits it's on days like this that you find such issues i know her to be a very very good you know worker so let me just call her and find out what exactly is happening yeah okay looks like one of the phone numbers is off let me try the other So her personal phone numbers are off and the company number she won't answer i'm going to find out what's happening and when i do i'll let you know but in the meantime let's just get going to you know to my last client i thought i would go with her to the client but unfortunately she's not answering the phone and the outlet is closed 25 minutes before time i think that's the reason of these spot checks because you never know what to expect. Wow, guys, so while driving, I just remembered that actually the lady is an SDA. That means Seventh day Adventist. That's her religion. That means she's at church today. <laughs> and that's why she's not present. And now I remember that the agreement with her was that she doesn't work Saturdays and she works Sundays. So she'll actually be at the outlet tomorrow and not today. It was a mistake that I made. But hey, it's understandable. It's not like I'm here every Saturday. And um, I'm not, I don't directly supervise her. This is just me doing field work and checking out the outlet. So, my bad, my bad. Hi, Becky. How are you? I'm okay. I came to the shop. I told you. You work on Sunday. Uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow morning. Color. and I've reached my next client's home he has a beautiful home right there very beautiful home it's a beautiful morning and uh, finally I'm done with my breakfast guys I'm at the hotel and it's about it's coming to 9 a.m. so we've got to go and check out the the outlet you know the shop just arrived it's 10 minutes past nine so she's 10 minutes late but I can see that she's opening the shop right now you can see it being opened right now yeah she's right there you can see the farm up sign post right up and you can see her opening the outlet and now she has just told me that there's some farmers around who badly need to see me we're going to go and see them so she's going to jump in the car then we'll go and check out some of these farmers, maybe two or three farmers. So, I'm not going to travel to Kampala as early as I thought. Honestly, I'm quite exhausted after the trip. I really need to get home and rest. But hey, let me go and check out this client, see what they've got to say, see how their birds are performing. And then I'll be able to travel home. It doesn't hurt, isn't it? Maybe two hours I'll spend extra over here before I go home. been a long trip 
finally got done i visited all the clients that i needed to visit some of them were doing really well some of them had corrections to make but all in all they were so glad to see me you know to have me around very very glad i had to drive back to kampala and i can tell you gladly that i'm now in kampala it's been a long journey and you can see the traffic around you know you can see all the traffic around and finally i'm going to go and you know put my head down and rest finally Whew. so tell me guys what you think about this kind of video if you like it and you've enjoyed it hit that subscribe button share it with your you know your friends uh, share it on your social media let me know what other kinds of videos you would love me to upload uh, this has been an interesting one because it's the first time that I have to record a video over a number of days. Uh, for my YouTube channel, the Farm Up channel, I would always record everything the same day. It doesn't take long. Sometimes it's just a few minutes. For this one, it has had to take, you know, two or three days. So it's a different one. It's a different experience. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Lots of love. Catch you very soon in the next one. Bye.